Pastor Simon, would you please give a blessing? Good evening, Lord. Eternal God, we come before you today and we ask a blessing on our city, all those who live here, work here, all those who visit here. Lord, we ask a blessing on St. John and all those in authority here. We ask a blessing on Stafford County, all the counties, our state, our country. We ask a blessing on all those in authority over us. We ask, Lord, that you would guide them and protect them. But we ask that uh, all decisions made tonight would be, be, be begun, continued, and ended in Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that uh, you give our council persons a good heart, good mind, bless them, help them to make decisions uh, that are just and right. And then, Lord, give them a safe night after they leave here, a blessed night, a holy night, and I wake them to more good spirits. Lord, we ask a blessing on this meeting. Let your Holy Spirit be here with us. Let your Holy Spirit guide us, protect us, take care of us. These are not the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a good evening. Thank you. Okay. Additions, is there any additions to the agenda? Slides one through eight. Assistant manager, lifeguards, and then uh, a pool manager. Okay. But I don't know if we're ready to make a decision on that. Doesn't matter. Okay. Someone? Second. Agenda, Donna. Approve the minutes of the regular meeting of March 19, 2013. Approve appropriation ordinance 320-2013 in the amount of $245,831.52. Approve appropriations ordinance 0401-2013 in the amount of $10,000. $578.15. Approve appropriation ordinance 0402 2013 in the amount of $61,437.24. And approve the beer garden for Jubilee May 24th, 25th, for 7 p.m. to 1 a.m. Sales to end at midnight. stuff being piled outside the fire station in the south east corner on the outside. Don't know. Okay. I'll take a look at it. Okay. I saw it the other day and I'm thinking it doesn't look very good. So okay. Thanks Michael. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh police department Adam. 
Um, under vehicle purchase, I think you guys, John, I gave you guys copies of what Marmy said that they would give us for trade into the truck, um, which was two thousand dollars the way it sits. Um, and then there's also copies of uh, the warranties that they had available. One of them, the top one is just powertrain only, and you can see what what the costs are. And then the, the one that's maximum care is a bumper to bumper warranty. So that's what they provided for me for all that. Did they give us an estimate on what it cost to uh, fix the vehicle? No, I called up there and asked them to send me a quote, and he was supposed to fax it, and he has it. Okay. I had, and, and when I had talked to him, I had difficulty getting them to get back in contact with me, too. So. I asked him about fixing it and asked him about putting a new motor in it or a rebuilt motor in it. I didn't hear anything from him, so if we get it tomorrow, I'll get it one to all you guys. Copy of it. Did you want to remove your executive session off number one? I didn't ask for one. If nobody needs it, we'll take it off. <laughs> I know. I guess if it bounces back to my brain, then I'll say something. I guess my opinion would be just do the, do the bumper to bumper for five years. I'm getting an old 25,000 mile warning for another 500 bucks. Get more now, so, so that's thirty six thousand in three years, isn't it? The original one. <coughs> Want to pick up when you buy it? Probably. I don't know what it is. I'm just saying on this. So, I mean, all these other ones only go to seventy five thousand. Oh, I see. So, and actually, it's about another seven hundred bucks to take it from a powertrain for five years to seventy five thousand to a bumper, a bumper to a hundred. So. Well, I make a motion to buy the maximum care bumper to bumper warning for five years, 100,000 miles for the man of $2,275. We uh, have to get that done by the yeah, I was going to say, I don't know about that. I mean, we can talk about that yet. I was just saying on the warning. That's right. We made a motion to buy the pickup last week. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. yeah. Okay. So. I'll second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think a 2004 model is on a second motor is worth putting any money, period. That's what I say. So you just want to take the $2,000 and uh, roll on? That's what on? I suggest. We don't have to go get it. We don't have to sell it. We don't have to deal with it. It's gone. I did take all the equipment and everything out of it Monday. Well, you, what you guys to That seems... I mean, unless we thought we could get more out of it selling it out, right? I don't yeah. know you could or couldn't. I think that uh, the 2000 is it's a lot more than I thought they'd get for it, so. Covers your warranty all those. Yeah. You know, you got some electric problems on it, Troy. You know as well as I do. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm just saying. It, is it doesn't matter. Time. To me, really. Yeah. One way or the other. Sounds reasonable to me. Okay, so take $2,000 for the dog truck. Yes. That's what I think. So we want to make, do we need to make a motion for that or we? Okay, please make a motion. What do you think, Amy? You okay with that? Yep. 
So, so moved. Second. All those better say aye. Aye. Uh, All those better say no. Okay. Do you need to amend the original motion for the purchase price the price of the truck? We didn't actually put a price. It was not to exceed. Right. So. Um, that will actually make but that will that will exceed it a little bit. Two hundred cents Oh, with the bumper to bumper. Right. Yeah, but you made yeah, a so separate motion just... for the bumper to bumper. Yeah. Okay. So. period for the hiring of Chief Sailor for two more months. Second. from the time of the six months. I just wanted to keep the, the fourth officer position on the agenda in case you guys had uh, discussed or looked over whatever policies you wanted to do before we moved on with that. Um, my thoughts on that are is that the hiring process is a couple months. I would I would like to see us advertise, and, and that is I think that's something we could get worked out between the time of advertising and actually hiring somebody. I didn't know how you guys would feel about that. How's council feel about that? Well, if you have somebody come in right away that you like, that ain't going to be fair to them to be hired and not know their policy, for sure. Mm, that would be my concern about it. Well, but typically we, we accept applications for 30 days, um, and by the time, I mean, but never have we had somebody that we just, just came in and then we just hired them off the street. I mean, there's there's going to be... I would say at least two months before an offer would actually be made. Historically, anyway. We can take applications. We don't really have to do anything besides look at them. We don't have to really hire anybody. And like Adam said, it's going to be a lengthy process. So. But at the same time, I mean, I don't, I don't want to. Waste, you know, I don't want to take a bunch of applications just to tell yeah. somebody in the end that we're not going to hire somebody. Exactly. I'm open for whatever. I was just throwing that out there. I think we should finish the process of getting the policies in, in order and then go from there. Is there any way we can put a target date? Oh, so I'm just going to ask council. You, with new council coming on, you might have to do a special meeting. To do to get it 
to get it done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. Well, I'd like Joe to be there too. Okay. So you want John to call him whenever you guys to see if he'd be interested in helping with that? Yeah. Okay. Policy. Yeah, I mean, give us some guidance. I mean, he's done it at South Hutch and mm -hmm. familiar with a couple other cities, so I mean, he's got a lot more guidance on it. So you yeah, think yeah. you want to do a yeah. special meeting to, to go through the police policy? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Okay. 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 Number four, Adam? Um, well, I got... Uh, our department signed up for federal surplus property to be able to utilize some of the cheaper surplus stuff. Um, and one, one of the primary reasons for that was um, patrol rifles. And our state contact called me this week and said that they have some available. Um, the cost of the rifles would be $75 per rifle. Um, and then a transfer fee, which their transfer fee is basically just shipping. Um, he said around $50 to ship them. So, um, right, and they, they have some available. Um, so that would be rifles we could get for 75 a piece versus a thousand or better. What kind of rifles? Right? They would be um, just your basic M16 military patrol rifle. Right? So if you're familiar with an AR-15, it's the older version of that. Mm -hmm. Any discussion, Council? Do you carry those in your vehicle or do they just stay here? No, that, that would those would be carried in the vehicle by the officer. But a, a, a rifle is, of course, just like a sidearm, that's something that needs to be the officer specific due to sighting, right. that kind of thing. Um, so it would be, yeah, I mean, it would, they would be, you know, our shotguns are, are kept in the, in the vehicles. Is that pretty standard <coughs> equipment for each police, I mean, department, we are the only officers? We are the only department in the county that does not have rifles. We're the only department in, well, I mean... Reno County, Barton County, Edwards County, Pawnee County, Pratt County, all have patrol rifles. And you're looking at how many to get? Four. Four. Because it's the same. It, it's the same transfer fee for one or fifty, and, and they allow what they call 100% staffing. So, however many full-time officers you have. A lot of by policy, you can yeah. get a rifle for each officer. And these are these refurbished or brand new? Surplus? They're 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 basically refurbished, is what they're called. Um, and and once once we get them, they remain the property of the government. Um, however, we can we can alter them if, if one you know. If, if your typical AR-15 has a telescoping it. stock where these don't. So if in the future we want to, you know, if we want to buy telescoping stocks for them, we could do that. We would just have to keep the original equipment. And that, that way, when and if it ever went back to the government, the rifle would be reassembled to where it was in its original condition to be sent back. $75 is, uh, that's really a steal you know, for something like that. I mean, considering when you're looking at a used one, it goes anywhere from six to a thousand dollars. The city of Stafford has some and, and we've shot them at our range and they perform very well. And you can get ammunition? It's hard, but yeah. We can, I mean, it's, it'll be pieces, you know, matching it to the other like we have everything else. We finally got duty ammunition for our pistols that we've been waiting four months for. Huh. So you can get it, it's just being at the right place at the right time.
and how long is this going to, how long are these going to be available? Until they run out. Until they run out. Yeah, there's no, I mean, they get shipments in them at a, you know, at a time, the contract just calls and says we have enough for, for how many you want. And they're probably, these are probably being recycled from Afghanistan or everywhere. Everywhere, yeah. Okay. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out what we're needing to in the police department. You never know. What caliber is it? Better to have it. It's a 223. I'll, I'll give you a perfect example of why we would need an M16. The hall, the main hallway of our high school is right at or a little better than 100 yards, which is out of the range of a pistol. We have an active shooter in the high school, and we need to shoot the length of a hallway we're not going to hit with our pistol. $300 for four of them, that's, that's not bad. Not in my book. I don't know how the rest of the council feels. Let's get iron sights. Yep. Budget. I would move that we allow Adam to buy for $75 each for $300. We only have three options. Well, well, he's making a motion. He's making if, you a guys, if you guys want to discuss it. And we well, I would say we only have three officers. So. But eventually we're going to have four. Possibly. So uh, the motion still stands. Is there a second? Officer. One second left. Always in favor say aye. Aye. All those best say no. No. Kevin, Troy, and Bob say no. I would suggest maybe once the policy is rewritten, look at it again. But what policy? Once we go over the policy, mm -hmm. isn't that what we discussed? The once department. the council goes over policy that we just discussed. Okay, I, I guess I misunderstood. I thought that was policy re just regarding schedule. Like I didn't realize it was the entire policy manual. Yes. Well, I'm pretty sure it's, they're going to go over the whole policy manual, Adam. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Five. Okay. Number five, Adam. Um, seal carry legislation. I just want to bring it to your attention. Um, right now, they're moving. Um, they haven't made, voted on it yet in, in the House and the Senate, but both have concealed carry bills that change the um, acceptable places where people with concealed carry permits can carry um, and it allows if it's passed it will allow those with concealed carry licenses to carry in uh, state buildings um, public buildings which include city halls all um, things like that um, the only way a uh, government entity or anything can restrict that is if they provide uh, armed security as well as um, metal detectors, whether it be a walk-through metal detector or somebody's metal detector wand at every public entrance and exit. So I just wanted you guys to be aware that if it does pass, that citizens will be allowed to carry inside the city building. It also applies to employees. There, there will be nothing that, it, it will, the state law will say that an employee can carry um, inside their place of work as well. 
just wanted you guys to be aware of that in case you have anybody questions or anything like that. So in other words, I guess you better be calling your senators to be disagreeing. So I think it's already passed that, but it, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't Actually, hurt. Is, they, they did send out something with um, this morning, and I haven't gotten it out to everybody that had the list of the committee. Mm -hmm. I'll get that forwarded to everybody. <coughs> Are you getting your four words when yes. I said those yes. words? Okay. How about you, Bob? Nope. Oh. Oh. <laughs> okay. I don't know what was happening a long time. Your iPhone ain't so hot. I have a six. Don't catch me. That's a monthly report. Thank you. The air ask one provided everybody. We have the uh, Crown Vic in at Fisher's today and getting the oil changed. I also had them look at the headlight switch. Turns out it's not the switch, it is a. Look at my. A lighting control module that is underneath the dash. And it is going to cost $712 to replace that lighting control module. $500 for the module, and then the rest is later. Um, Troy called Rusty Eck in Wichita, and apparently they get about one or two a month from Wichita PD Crown Vicks that have this exact same problem. So, I would please like to have approval to fix that so we have taillights again. Make a motion to line to buy whatever needs to fix the taillights. Aye. Thank you. And because I'm so full of good news, our light bar on the truck was fried as well when it caught on fire. Well, I can tell you, I'm not. I'm not going to buy any more thousand-dollar light bars. <laughs> um, they have what they call a, a half bar. It's about 36 inches. Um, the ones I've looked at come with a five-year warranty. Of course, unfortunately, this one the warranty doesn't cover it because of, of the way it was happened. Um, but um, a couple reasons I, I'm looking at these is they're the, the ones I've been looking at are around $200. They plug into a cigarette lighter adapter, you flip a switch to turn it on, and there's a switch for the uh, pattern select and all that. So we can save money on a light bar, and we can also save a lot of money when it comes time to install everything in the vehicle, because instead of having to have somebody spend the time to actually hardwire it, it can be plugged into a cigarette plug and gone that way. So. You might want to have some quotes or some prices on what do they get for one of them round magnetic lights that sits on top of the kid? <laughs> oh, 85 bucks. There you go. Okay. Thanks, Adam. You're Is there welcome. any questions, other questions, Brad? Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Administration, Melvin. The uh, first item I had is our supply of uh, power poles are getting low, and we found uh, Staines, who would buy our pole suit, has got another town that uh, could use a half a load, so we'll split the load with them, and uh, we'll get 20 uh, 35 footers and uh, six of the uh, 30 footers. So total price, uh, tax, and everything is $6,128.98. How many 30 footers? Did you say six? Six. Six, yeah. And what was the other? 20 and the 35. And who is that from? Stanley. Are we completely out now? Well, we're getting low on that. We need to get some on hand. 
We usually never try and run clear out the old, our inventory is getting low enough. We need to get another place. What's the freight bringing them in? Uh, that's all included. That's included? Yeah. What was that figure? Six thousand one? Six thousand one hundred and twenty eight dollars and ninety eight cents. Twenty eight seasons before this. Let's hope on. So we yeah, let's hope. Second. Other favorite staff? All right. All this best now. Thank you. Uh, next item I have is uh, sheep being at the sewer ponds. We have uh, two two bids. Okay, this would be Steve Frank, uh, five hundred and thirty-seven dollars and eighty-four cents total. Yeah. For how many months? Well, that goes from uh, uh, April, the first part of this month, till uh, the middle of September. And that's how many sheep? Yes, we've already got it set out that it's just a matter of what it'll handle, and if we see that they're, you know, starting to stress the ground, stress the grass, they have to get them off. So that's the way we. This is, this is basically the same agreement we've had every year before, except we haven't had a charge for it. So it just works. For, I mean, we have the right if we see that the grass is, is going and say, hey, there's too many sheep out there, you need to cut it back. So it just depends on the year weather and <coughs> Okay, uh, this would be from uh, Priority Ranch, Janice Hildebrand, uh, $588. Motion to accept priority range of five hundred and eighty-eight dollars. Where is priority range from? Catherine. Yeah, these are the people that have had their sheep out there for four or five years. Oh, these are the chance yeah. of the yeah. oh, second portion. I'll abstain for conflict of interest. All the favors now? All the favors now? Okay, I'd like to uh, request an executive session attorney client uh, possible litigation for 10 minutes to include myself, counsel, mayor, attorney, and the gentleman. So moved. Thursday, Alan. That was the best thing ever. Voting delegates, but they want someone listed. Chances are you're not going to do anything. Bill and Troy. So moved. Second. Okay. <laughs> Boy, it's amazing how some things never even have a state table. Another one takes years. I'm going to I'm gonna guess it's not going to help me to discuss this any will. What for you? Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no? No. Carried. Uh, Thanks, Next, yes, thank you. Anytime. Thank you. Uh, next item I had under the superintendent's report, uh, as you all know, uh, Nick Knighty had resigned his position his last day, April 12th. Uh, we've got uh, ads run in the local paper. We've got them in KMU, uh, the Lead Journal, and on Kansas Works on, online. So, uh, and on the website. And on the website. So. And keep in mind when we're doing that, we all agreed that we were going to follow the ordinances. So <coughs> they're going to have to live in town or how the ordinance is. From here on yes. There's not going to be any exceptions. 
unless everybody wants to change the whole ordinance. Is it the ordinance or the personnel policy? In the ordinance, I think. No, no. Actually, no. Pers it is actually personnel. It is personnel. It's personnel. It's personnel. Yeah. It's personnel. Okay. We went. We could do it. Three yeah, miles out. Can I ask you a favor. Huh? Three miles out is what it says. By each person. No, right? the last time you all hired the one feller. Ruben Martin. It, yeah. I don't know, I thought they, we hired that one. Oh, was it Ruben? And then we hired Ruben and he lived out of Okay, that yeah. Way. And then that's when Troy suggested no more exceptions. No, we actually only got brought up. Yeah. Am I correct? And then council agreed or? Nope. Oh. Well. I don't, I don't remember. I will really remember discussing that. I will say, in all the time, and even the storms, Nick's never missed it. In these last snowstorms, those guys stayed in town. They were here, and it's, it's never been an issue. I just think if you had a really good candidate that lived four miles out, you're cutting your throat. If I, all I'm saying is, if you're going to have the ordinance, so change right. it. Follow. So you're, you're, if you're saying not going to change yeah. the policy. I, I see mean, as of right now. It needs to be as it's read. Okay, on well, you ought to think about changing that sure. and and taking that into consideration because I think it's going to come back to bite you. And I'll say, uh, I think his new ordinance is 20 miles from Kinsley. Huh? Nick. Oh, yeah. You know, well, that's, that's, a yeah, that's a company. That's a company deal. Well, I understand that, but. But their policy is allowing him to be within 20 miles. Yeah. yeah, but you just don't want to get in a position as a council having to not hire somebody just because they live outside of that three miles. You know, so you might think about readdressing that. Staff are considered, uh, I think, a 12 or 15 mile radius. I mean, that would allow staff to for them, it would allow St. John to Sylvia, Edson. Uh, Bobby, last meeting you brought up about the farm ground lease, and uh, I did check <coughs> into it out there around where the nitrate plant is going to be, and you know we have to stay 100 feet away from the new wells, and I talked to Ned Marks about you know, crops and stuff out there. He's felt anything as long as we kept 100 feet away, as long as we didn't allow corn out there would be okay. Are you following? Mm -hmm. You're making a face. Yeah, no, I, I agree with Troy. Corn. Yeah, what's wrong with corn? <laughs> He's worried about the nitrogen, but you're going to have nitrogen put on everything. And whether they over, they over fertilize their wheat or they over fertilize their corn, that's their... Well, anyway, their that, that was his... I consulted him, you know, that's... You know, he's in a nitrate deal, and that was his recommendation that if we were to allow any crops out there, he would exclude corn. Mm. Probably because the corn needs more nitrogen. So mm. he's going to put a lot more on it. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's what he's concerned about. Right. He's corn more. more. Yeah. I mean, corn was out there, you have a tendency if to you're, make sure it hasn't done. If you're fertilizing according <laughs> to the crop, it's going to be a minimal no matter what the crop. I will say the only other comment he made it before he excluded the corn was that we would require a, a soil testing or whatever and make sure that, you know, uh, what they put on was what was recommended or I don't know what all you get into that. Is that something like, like using CropQuest or something like that to do that or how does that work? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't have a problem with that. I mean, but the, that's still, when you're using a service like that, it's still the farmer's discretion. I mean, he's just paying that person for their professional advice. That's what they're going to do. That's right. You can, I is, mean, there a, is there a recommendation on how often to test the soil? I mean, I, I don't really, I can't, I'm not familiar with any of that as far as how the, you know, that, that works. But when he first started out, he said, well, you can require soil testing, and I don't you know how, how often you do it, how you go about it make sure you didn't get too much fertilizer and then he said well the simplest way to do it will be just not allow any corn out there. You can do as many times a year as you want. How many acres are roughly going to be out there? Well I don't know. I, I, once, 
<coughs> past this point, do you guys want to do it? We're just going to block it off, and I can measure and come up with how many acres. I think there was what Don, you were around twenty there originally. Originally, and then you sold off the one. To yeah, Dan, I don't know if we got. And then by the time you put the ponds in, then you're probably going to have ten acres. Ten or eleven acres out there. there. So, and, and where's your well located from the north side of the pond? Well, it, no, it'd be uh, there. Probably just kind of, if you look north of Danny's place, <coughs> kind of north to the northeast a little bit, out in his backyard kind of through there. Not so near as far as the north edge. No, of the no. So anyway, I'm just kind of asking what, how you want to go about this, proceed. You know, we can we can come up now that everything's there, we know how far away. We can come up with a, you know, we can drive some stakes out there. This is where you're going to be farming. Tell them about how many acres I would entertain. Either or ten year lease or sell it. Either one. Doesn't matter to me. I'd say a five or ten year lease at least, but cash rent. We'll after you get we'll your put it up for bids. Five year. Five to ten, whatever. <coughs> well just a spare minimum on here. How about that? Five, five year. Well, I mean we I wouldn't be opposed to saying they have to have it soil sampled every year and if they have to have somebody look at it or whatever to give them the recommendations on. But like I said, that's kind of a mute point because it's still their discretion to either follow that guy's advice or not. However, if you get a soil sample, you know if they did it the year before or not. Not necessarily. But what if, I mean, I don't know how expensive that is. I mean, could we, could we have that done? Yes. In other words, we, then we've got to call and say, hey, look at here, you know, you need to cut yeah. back or whatever. I mean, if all we're worried about is nitrates, it's fairly cheap. If you go the full route, it's still not that expensive. So I don't know what they're costing on this now. Probably 45 bucks a sample or something like that. City to monitor. Even that high. City to monitor. We will do that. Yeah. They will right. have to go by our recommendation or whatever. The, that's that's received the recommendation. Yeah. So maybe you need to get something written up and bring yeah, it we, back to we them. Can, and they can if you want to do that, we can do it. And you know, I'll figure out how many acres take it out. And there you go from there. Okay. All right. Skip six. What's that? Six. Six on the agenda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd like permission to go ahead and advertise for uh, part time summer health for the Public Works Department, uh, mowing and trimming and patching and whatnot. Exactly. Right. You would like to, but you know, it, I, if we need to advertise or if we can just hire, however you want to do it, but we need to you know, advertise or. How did we do it last year? Well, I think we need to advertise because because we always take new applications for the swimming pool and stuff, and it would be similar seasonal. Okay. So. So moved. Second. There's that. Aye. Thank you. Do we have to make a motion on that deal, or do we on the farm deal? He's, He's going to draw it. Uh, uh, we'll get something worked up and bring it back, and you guys can approve it, I think, on that. Mm -hmm. The consensus is we want to go ahead and get that. Uh, then uh, we're having, have had some issues on the north well with uh, sand. Uh, we're pumping some sand, and uh, we're picking it up in our uh, coronation equipment up there. So I called Clark Well up, and uh, their thought on it was that they've got a uh, go up there and we'll hook their place where we can hook some equipment up there and do a sand test, and it'll show on the amount of our flow how much sand we're getting out while we're pumping. Mm -hmm. And uh, then if if it we have, if they said there could be a couple things going on. One, we could have a problem with uh, the pump itself may have a place washed out or a flaw in it and we're when the pump's running it's jetting water out into the screen or stirring it up and that's why we're, sometimes we're getting sand and uh, we could have a problem with our screen but anyway the first step they would recommend was go ahead and do a pump test on this to to determine the the quantity of sand we're pumping as we're as the well is running. That's nine hundred and twenty five dollars to do that. What would it cost? Well I know you probably don't know but like uh um, the other world, frozen cranks. Has a guy that'll come out and run a camera down it. 
and look at all the all your casings, your screen, your pump, and everything without having to pull anything. Do we know what that would cost? Well, I did talk to Clark Well about running a TV down here, and they they thought as close as that's going to be in there that they probably be best to pull a well to do that. And maybe he's got something or or whatever, but that's that's what they told me. I'd like to at least talk to Rosecrans see if, see what they'd say as far as what their problem. I mean, what they would think they have to do. Are they out of? Okay, if they if they can go ahead and TV that, I mean, if it's within my spending authority, I'll do that. Reasonable. Yep. Okay. Uh, I mean, if they think it's going to tell us the problem, I mean, right. And, and instead of having to pull and do everything else, they might be able to just run a camera down here, tell us what our problem is, and then we know. Right. And, you know, and on the back side of that is that, you know, if we pump the pump the well and they've got a deal that, and it picks up how, on the amount of water you're pumping, it picks up how much sand is going out and it tells you, you know, like you're pumping you know, 5,000 gallons of water, you're going to end up with so many, so much sand. It's a it's quantified deal on how much sand you're pumping as your well is running. If, if we would do that, I'll, we'll have to weigh out as far as $925 TV in it, and we're still, I mean, they may just say, okay, you got a problem with your pump, we can see it with the TV thing. I mean, I guess we'll just have to weigh it out. Well, I, was say, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, just, yeah, I, mean, I, I think it would be worth talking to them about it. Right. And I, and I, right, and I asked Clark well, well about it, because they've got people that do that, too, or have people they can call in, and he said, he questioned whether they could get a good look at it with, with the well in there. Pump in there, so. Yeah, steel casing. Is that correct? I think so. Yeah, we've had the. Uh, Do you know the year of it? No, not for sure on that. And he, they've got records on it, and they, they installed a new uh, piping a number of years back. It's a submersible, in there. and that's been removed. But they thought maybe, quite possibly, they could just be stirring up, or we could have a problem with our screen, or you know, they won't know. They just want. Their, their idea was to see how much sand we got coming out. That was their first thought. Is that the swimming pool well? Yeah, the, yeah, north well. So let me run the rest of these prices by you, if, if I could, and we'll find out about the, the TV deal. Uh, and then to do is go ahead and the $925 was to do the pump test and the sand. And then if they're up there and we're getting enough sand that they really think we need to check into it farther, it was $620 to go ahead and pull the well, pull the pump. And do an inspection on that. Take take the well or take the pump to the shop and, and check it over. So, what was sixteen hundred or six hundred? Uh, so you said sixteen hundred twenty dollars. Okay. What did I say? You said six twenty five. <laughs> well, I need to add a one. That's what I was sitting here looking at. Too. That's, That's a good deal. Sixteen hundred twenty dollars. I'm sorry. The only thing about it, I, my, if you do use rose and branch, you might want to make sure that they do the mist valve. So I'm not sure if they do. I know they do irrigation, they always have, but I don't know if they do. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm just saying we need to make sure if they're municipal. I think you'd, you'd pay to shop around. And, and, and I'll ask if they can do it. And, and Clark said, well, yeah, we can TV it, but I don't think, you know, that's what they initially told me. So that's right. why we're at this point. So. Right. so anyway, I would go ahead and the reason I would like to get done what we're going to do is that they haven't made the connection up there at the, the North Well. I mean, they're, they're going to, but. I'd like to if we're going to get trucks in there and get all that done because they're going to be they're going to dig out right in front of that well right where we're and I'd rather get the well work done before we get the ground all tore up up there to begin with. So if you would authorize to spend two thousand five hundred forty five dollars or just the TV work and this other on top of it. So if it was mine, okay. I would find out how old that well is and invest all this $2,500 in your well. I wouldn't waste any of that on testing if that well is 100 years old or well, not 80 years, years old. old. But it might be a simple, might be just a simple pump repair. I mean, they've got records on that well up there. They've had it, you know, they've done all of our work on it. And so, I mean, we can find out. But I mean, if we should, we're talking about a new well, I mean, we're, you know, 80 over 100,000, we know that. That's what, that's what they were saying when we were talking about that. Plus $50,000 worth of tests prior to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, you know. That's 
sand is coming from somewhere and it can't be stopped. I'm well, sure of it. Well, if, it, if it's got a screen problem or yeah. a jet problem, then a piece five, Kevin. Why couldn't you? That is what he said. It might, if you've got a problem with the pump, it could be jetting that sand. Is what he said, right. stirring it up. So. It's not like the old did. It's not like you got a packer in the hole. I assume it's an open hole. Yeah. And it's a submersible. Yeah. Well, if you get a hole in the pot, it's got to be going somewhere. It's going to wash back down the back side. Could stir a lot of sand there. I make a motion to uh, once he checks into the frozen cramps, he uses his own joke. I mean, whichever one's cheaper, whichever one he thinks is best, up to a limit of $2,550. $2, okay, now if I do TV and then they say, well, you got a real issue, we're going to be. I can eliminate the 925 and we're still looking at the 1620. Right, but you get that spinning limit right there. Well, that camera can tell you you have a hole in your casing and you're done. It's new well thought, isn't it? Right, well, but if it's. Casing, it, whatever, but yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, what to I'm, me, it'd be worth taking the camera and going down, but yeah, like I said, I don't know what I. I don't know what the TV's going to cost, is what I'm saying. Right. If it's over $925, I'm going to be back here talking to you. Yeah. Well, but surely just the TV ain't going to be over 2550 which is going to give you what your limit is. Okay. Well, they has to. So I mean, at that point, if, if you, if we find out there's, if the TV comes in or you do something else and it's, it's over that, then, then we can have a quick session or whatever and get it approved and move on. Okay. All right. Unless somebody okay. else yeah. wants something else done. We'll try. Okay. Okay. So allow Mel to spend up to... $2,550 for research. Like I said, Rosencrantz may not even do municipal. I don't know yet. Did you, did you second, Kevin? Uh, no, you're not. Do I have a second? I thought Bob. Bob, did you second? I think Bob did. Oh, yeah. Bob, did we need to get a second. They just started talking. Yeah, I'll second. Want second. Oh, second. I got my question whether that's enough money is what I was thinking. I would think that at least find our problem. It may not be enough to fix it, but that's what I was saying. We could always call on. Well, if it's going to be more money than that. Mel said you could call, Troy said you could call a quick shot session. Or if he knows what it is, call a quick shot session and he gives you the update and then money wise for Or I mean, it is it? Well, is it no? North well. Is it? He's, or is it legal for him to be able to say, I mean, call us and just say, that, look, guys, I'm going to be over my limit. Can we, we do that that way? We can't pull okay. the council. Yeah, but can we can that. get three of you to come in, or we can get you all on speakerphone somehow, because okay. that's legal. But I have to publicize that and everything ahead of time. Okay. It's got to be in the minutes. Yes, Mel. But I do have 2,000 screen authority. Mm -hmm. I could use that to, to do the TV and then separate from this here. Yeah, sure. That would take care of that. Okay. Guys with that. I mean, that, that way, I mean, I would intend to do it for this, but I'm saying I would... That well, like I said, both of them may say the TV is not the way to go. I don't know. Okay, and if not, we'll have it down there and we'll do it for that. Do, do the pump test. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean both of them say Which that ain't the way to do it. Said. What do you yeah. think, Kevin? You're in that business. Mm -hmm. I'm going to vote yeah. no. Won't spend any money. <laughs> I say you need to save up for a new well. I don't know where it's at in age. If it was anywhere near the power plant or no, I don't think it's that old. I'm not sure how old it is. Up there, but, I mean, you can rehab a lot of stuff for the price it takes to. A new well. You could slip a sleeve in there too if it was a crack in the pipe. Well, a crack in the pipe or a screen. I could put another screen inside it too. But, uh, Okay, any more discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say no. No. Thanks, right. Council. Rattlesnake right Creek. Uh, Kevin brought that up. Uh, has a concern, or someone has a concern that was brought to him about the 
blow out the rattlesnake because of the tornado and all the trees just a little more quick before you start Kevin. During the tornado about a year ago, uh, there's all kinds of trees knocked down that fell into the rattlesnake creek. Uh, FEMA and everybody gave money for, the, I don't know if you've been out there and they cleaned, gave so, so many feet that they would give money for clearing of the debris around there. And the county went out there and did that. So now there's a concern. Uh, we had a concern and I voiced it uh, with the FEMA people about you know, all the trees and everything down inside the creek about possibly diverting the flow and could at some point impact the, the sewer ponds. And they said they were not going to give any money for that. You know, they didn't see the immediate threat. And, you know, said, well, if there ever is, come back. Well, I mean, it might take 20 years or whatever. But anyway, so Kevin, you can go ahead and... The uh, tenant that's renting that ground <coughs> is wanting to apply for that money. And they need someone, a government, to say that that is a threat because it's a bottleneck to either the sewer ponds or the town where I would say nine, over 90% of the city's water dumps in there. Very little of it drains to the highway. And she would just like us to sign off on that and say we are concerned about that. And she wants to go get that money and have it, that work done on Lloyd's half a mile or however many feet it is. So no cost to us, she just wants us to be concerned. I've looked at it, and it yes. does look like a bottleneck, and Mike Mel says you can't even get to the outlet of our pond without, I mean, climbing right. like a mountain man. I mean, I have a problem <coughs> with that, but I mean, how far down the creek, though, do you, I mean, just because you get that quarter, yeah, quarter done doesn't going. mean we're out of the out of the loop, I mean, out of the right. sphere either. Exactly. I mean, if the water stops at the half mile line, it's not like, whoosh, yeah. we're out of it. First landlord, I guess, which I suppose they'll have to have it inspected. We, we believe me, that place was crawled all over. We had five or six people from FEMA, Kansas Department of Emergency Management. We had everybody out there looking it over, taking pictures. I, I said, I want you to look at this, and and they did, and they that was their that's where it stopped right there. So I'm not saying they didn't say that you know it couldn't be looked at or whatever, but they. When they were handing out the money, they said we're not giving any money for this. So. We're we're not out nothing, other than just saying we're concerned about. It. Right. I'd make a motion to say that we're concerned about. It. I'll second that motion. Okay. Do we have sign anything? I'm, I'm sure, sure we will. will. Yeah, I'm sure I'm so I think maybe we make that motion or, or whatever when you bring the stuff in. I don't know that. How yeah. how do we make this? Just make it a directive to you to parts of. Participate in the process and let her go ahead and apply for the grant. You'll agree to sign for the grant. Right, the mayor will sign. Yeah, we'll send in the party to visit with you. Yeah, because we, you know, the way that is surveyed out there, we own the south, you know, from the center of the creek south, and then the other is to the north. So, to all that property is not set up. So, as, as it, if it changes course, you know, we'll. You know, like I say, it, it bends right there. I said, you know, I can just see that thing. It, you know, could take it depending on how much rain. It could go right toward the. And that's what I said. You know, I said then then we got a really big bill to pay. You got to redo all this creek rather than getting a bunch of trees, which it's not going to be cheap either way. You know. All the more damage on the table. Do we need to? Did we have a second? The only reason I kind of disagree is there's five miles of creek before that that ain't ever going to flow either. When yeah, it happens. That's, that's the issue I got. Yeah. I mean, but I mean, I don't have problems saying it's a concern, but I mean, I'm just saying there's a lot of other ground that's got to clear before it becomes an issue at that point. I mean, five miles of creek would be an underestimate by the bones. Yeah. So. Okay, I'll, I'll in favor say aye. Aye. I didn't have a second. Oh, you did. Kevin, Kevin, oh, I'm sorry. You, he moved. I second. I was supposed to say no. Thanks, Council. Any questions for now this evening? Okay.
Getting all the junk picked up in town? Yeah. It doesn't look like quite as much as we've seen in the past. No. I've noticed some vehicles in the way of stuff that needs to be picked up. How are you guys proceeding with that? If their vehicles are in the way, you're just going well, we on? Do, or? We can come back, but I mean, if it's something that's pretty major, but I mean, they, they have no control. I mean, if it's the people that live there, yeah, they need to get them out of the way, but uh, they need, need to have them out of the way so we can pick the stuff up. I haven't heard you guys really say too much about it. Okay. Uh, Alrighty. Any other questions for Mel? Okay, Jonah. Um, all I have is the ordinance number 1017 that I put at your places. Just setting that bringing up our court costs to what the state has now. Move to approve. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Other than that, we're working on Jubilee and working on Jubilee and <laughs> have a band and still trying to come up with volunteers, so if anybody gets excited and wants to help with bingo or something, give me a call. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Oh, turn your, turn, turn it over. <laughs> I'll retract my second. <laughs> Don't make a motion to church. <laughs> 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 Is there a second? Motion, I'd like a second. Yes, Mel. You don't have anything on? The only thing, I, uh, I do want to say something on a personal note. I told Kevin before the meeting started. Uh, I've had two trailers stolen from my property in town last week, one of them this weekend, a uh, car trailer. So, I want to advise citizens to uh, be sure to have their stuff secured if it's outside storage because uh, you've got the thieves from the night. So uh, that's from a personal standpoint. But, uh, so And they've not been found? Or? Believe me, I just I found out today that there was one stolen, so I just turned it in. We had one stolen on the So I'm just saying there's a lot of that going on. So, uh, just be sure if you got something outside. School. We found a replacement the other night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, the legislature's still in session, so nothing is safe until they go, they go home for the end day. So keep a vigil on them. Yeah. Is there any questions for Don? Okay. Yes, Mel. Well, when you get done, old business. Okay, before we get to old business, I would like to thank the council that I've worked with in the last eight years and the citizens of St. John and Mel and Jonna and Don. You, you guys do a terrific job. You still have one. Uh, yeah, you just open it. I, open. I just open it. Yeah. So, but anyways, I just want to let you know, thank you and yeah, it's been a ride. So. Thank you. I don't know how the election is going to go. I don't know. I might be Brody. Yeah, I, I went by and I didn't see anything yet. So. No, thank you. Okay. No, Old business now. I was, uh, the large animal will have protection that doesn't go anywhere and the world we started with that has kind of went away the, the initial reason for that. Okay. So if it's okay, we'll go ahead and take that off. And I don't know where the Fox Memorial is. I tried to get a hold of them a couple of times and haven't heard from them, so. But I'm assuming they will probably be back at the end of May for. Yeah. We won't take that off. I'll leave that on there, please. So do we need a motion to take that off the whole business? Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those in favor say no. Hallelujah. That's only been on there about two years. <laughs> hey. Library fund will stay on there, so. Are we 
you investigating that or what are you building for? Um, Josh Myers has talked to me a couple times. He says he wants to come back to the council. He's just not ready to come back yet. So it's just taking a little process. He needs to speak with the BOE. So. I'm with motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Aye.